Well, good day, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the next video. The content of this video is uh, is something that's been that's been percolating inside of me for for quite some time, and it has to deal with these these verses in the New Testament mostly that speak about the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus. And what I came to realize was that there's many more prophecies of Jesus appearing than there are prophecies of Jesus riding the clouds. And you might think, well, why wouldn't you just think, you might say, hey Tim, why wouldn't you think that that riding the clouds is equivalent uh, to appearing? And it just, it just doesn't set right for me because there was something in the Bible where Jesus did appear to his disciples and he wasn't riding the clouds. I'm sure you guys are aware of this and we know that there's nothing new under the sun. What has been done is what will be done. So after Jesus rose from the dead on Resurrection Sunday, he began to make appearances appearing to his disciples. And in Acts chapter 1 verse 3 it says, And he presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. I think he's going to do the exact same thing again. And th that's sort of the thing that uh, that just keeps going through my mind is, you know, like, what is it going to be like when Jesus returns? Like, what, what happens first, then next? Is it all one just big event that lasts a couple days, a week? Or is his second coming or the events of gathering his first fruits and his second fruits and and is, is that all just over the course of months? So I can't give you that answer here, but I can at least speak about the difference between when he's coming with the clouds and when he's appearing. So there are many prophecies of seeing Jesus coming with the clouds. I'm sure you guys, everybody knows about these, these pictures here. You know, this is Jesus coming with the clouds with his saints. Here's Jesus riding on a white horse. This is probably Revelation 19. This is what we think about at the second coming. But do we ever think about his appearing? And that's that's all through the New Testament. So let me jump back to the study here. So, so the, there are many prophecies concerning, concerning Jesus and coming with the clouds. We'll look at them in here in a second. However, there are many more that speak about his appearing or his epiphany. That, that's another name for it from the scriptures. The scriptures that point to his appearing all have a very pleasing and desirable outcome. These appearing prophecies all occur to Jesus' faithful followers, just like in the New Testament in Acts chapter 1. Those who are eagerly waiting for his return. Because we know there's a lot of people on the planet that don't even care. Some people don't even know who Jesus is. Uh, the numbers I saw is 60% of the population of the world has never even heard who Jesus is. That says we got a lot of work to do. But many others, those who are not eagerly waiting on him, they will see him coming in the clouds while all the tribes of the earth, is what the, uh, while all the tribes of the earth will mourn. So the question is, are you eagerly waiting to see him face to face? And I've, met, I've said this many times. I ask a lot of people, Christians, you know, anybody, you know, at the store, at the line, the checkout line, I say, hey, if Jesus were to come tonight, are you prepared to go out and meet him and see him face to face? And most Christians struggle to say yes. All right, so Matthew 24, um, the Olivet Discourse. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. Then they will see the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. Revelation 1, behold, he, the Lord, is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. How is that going to work? So are they going to come back to life? Remember the folks who pierced him? Caiaphas and all those guys? Are they just going to be here alive watching him come? That's an interesting thing. It says in Daniel 12 that many who sleep in the dust of the earth are going to rise. Maybe it's those guys who rise. Caiaphas. You think about it. It's what it says in Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. And all the tribes will mourn because of him. So think about this. Think about the people that you know that are basically don't even know about Jesus, don't care about Jesus, and we're always talking about him and thinking about him. But here, all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Everyone will be mourning. They all will know who he is. 
Revelation 14, 4, Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and seated on the white cloud is like a son of man, that would be Jesus, with a golden crown, and he's harvesting the earth. He's swiping that sickle over the earth. Now, does that happen in a single instant? Or is that over the course of days or weeks? And then he swipes it across the entire earth till it's reaped. But here he is, coming with the clouds, riding on a cloud. Um, Luke says, um, I think riding on a cloud, Isaiah 19. We'll look at that here. Here's Jeremiah 4. Uh, he comes up like the clouds. His chariots are a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe to us, for we are ruined, says his own people. They say, my anguish, my anguish, I writhe in pain on the walls of my heart. How long must I see that sign, that sign, sign of the Son of Man, and hear the sound of that trumpet? You've heard, you guys know about this, right? And Jesus says, For my people are foolish, they know me not. They're stupid children, they have no understanding. Okay, Isaiah 19, it says, The oracle concerning Egypt. Behold, the Lord is riding a swift cloud and comes to Egypt. And the idols of Egypt tremble at his presence. The heart of the Egyptians will melt within them. So just to summarize, look, when, when he's riding the clouds, it's not good for the unbelievers. But where are the believers? Well, Okay, let's see here what it says. It says, so, but for those who are eagerly waiting for him, there will be rejoicing and glory. Many of the churches today will be surprised when he comes against them. Read Revelation chapter 3, the church at Sardis. The church at Sardis, in my opinion, are the denominational churches. They've left their first love. They have a hard heart, but there's still people in Sardis who haven't soiled their clothes and they'll walk with the Lord. That's a few amount. Just a few of them. But he's going to come against them, he says, like a thief. Read Luke chapter 12. Remember that servant who says, my master is not coming? Jesus literally, excuse my French, beats the crap out of him and kicks him out with the unbelievers. That's what they get for not watching for the Lord. The, his own servants will. It, it says, Jesus says, they will be cut to pieces. He says, I will cut them to pieces. He's not fooling around when it comes to his own people. You must be watching if you consider yourself a servant of the Lord or a follower. Okay, so Hebrews 9 tells us who these people are that are that are waiting to, like what defines somebody who he's going to appear to. So, so Christ, Hebrews 9 verse 20, so Christ will appear a second time. Remember, he appeared the first time uh, in Acts chapter 1. Not to deal with sin but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. That's the discriminator. Do you have friends and family that are not eagerly waiting for him? 2 Timothy chapter 4, Paul says, Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord is the righteous judge, will award me on that day, that day I think of his appearing, not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So my thought is, the return of Jesus is going to put many of the churches out of business. They're going to be like, what? Who wants to go to church and hear these, you know what I mean, hear these messages about nonsense, about how we have to do all these politically correct stuff. And But anyway, 1 John chapter 2. And now, little children, abide in him, so that when he appears... We may, have, we may have confidence and not shrink back from him in shame at his coming. So when he appears, to me, we're going to be filled with confidence, bold. We're going to go out and we're going to speak for him. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will do has not yet, has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him and we shall see him as he is. So when he appears... Uh, that means we're going to be transformed. Let that sink in. When he appears, we shall be like him. Okay, First Peter chapter 5. Look, so we have Paul speaking about this. We have John speaking about this. We got Peter speaking about it. Okay, First, first, Peter, uh, first Peter chapter 5 verse 4. And when the chief shepherd appears... We're gonna get. We're gonna receive that unfading crown of glory. So we get the crown of righteousness on that day when He appears, and we're gonna get the crown of unfading glory on that day when He appears. 
Titus chapter 2, verse 12. The Holy Spirit has been training. I, I know that I added that's not technically in a text, but who else would be training us but the Holy Spirit? Training us to renounce the ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self controlled, upright, godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. That word appearing again. For 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge you in the presence of God in Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, to, when he appears, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, and complete with complete patience and teaching. 1 Timothy chapter 6. I charge you in the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and to Christ Jesus, who, in his testimony before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession to keep the commandment unstained and be free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will display at the proper time. And this is the best one of all. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things below. We shouldn't set our minds on a worthless election that we know is fraudulent, should we set our minds on the things of this world? Should we let the cares of this world drag us down and opine about an election that really doesn't mean a hill of beans when this country is going to burn from sea to shining sea? Anyway, I digress. Set your minds on things above, not on things of this earth. For you have died, and, for, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your Lord, appears... I'm sorry, when Christ who is your life appears, then you shall also will appear with him in glory. And then I threw this other confusing one in, just for fun, 2 Thessalonians 2. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. Okay. So I've summarized all of these, and you can see the top three is what's going to be going on when Jesus is riding the clouds, coming with a cloud, riding a swift cloud. All the peoples of the earth will be mourning for him. They will be writhing in pain, hearts beating wildly, melting within them. He'll be when he's harvesting the earth. People will be, he will be calling people foolish, saying they are only wise at doing evil. That's Jeremiah 4. However, look at the eight items that occurs when Jesus appears. Now, I'm going on with the fact that when he appeared the first time in Acts chapter 1, think about, think about what it was like when Jesus appeared the first time. Let's take a look here and listen. Hopefully it works out and comes across in the video. Now, my opinion is when Jesus appears like this to me, I'm going to do more than just stand there. I'm going to be jumping up and down, going nuts. Be on to you. Why are you troubled? And why do thought? Well, I guess they saw him dead a few days earlier, so I guess they were a little freakish, but we know he rose from the dead, so we probably have a little bit different attitude than these guys. To rise in your heart. Behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. Have ye here any meat? So my thought is, just like I said earlier here, is look at this. Those who are eagerly waiting for him will be saved. Those who loved his appearing will receive the crown of righteousness. God's children will be full of confidence and not shrink back from shame. When he appears, we will be like him. We will see him as he is. We will receive a crown of unfading glory. We'll be trained to renounce the ungodliness and worldly passions. We'll preach the word, be ready to season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with complete patience and teaching, which I don't have right now, to be honest with you, those waiting will appear with him in glory. So who, this is different. So 
how do we compare this these events of this appearing with him riding the clouds so my thought is this you know i have a i've done timelines i'm not i've looked at these events so what happens first what happens next this is a very crude picture it's something that your kindergartner would probably scribble but what I see here is I see a period of preparation for the coming of the Lord. Right now, we're, we're in the season of Advent right now. The season of Advent is the preparation to celebrate the nativity of our Lord. Here's Advent. Okay, It's a two-pronged event. It's the time of expectant waiting and preparation for both the celebration of the nativity at Christmas... We know Jesus wasn't born on Christmas. We get that, right? But also, the definition of Advent is to prepare for his second coming. Now, technically, we should be prepared for his second coming every day of the year. But for some reason, the modern church has selected this time of the year to talk about, to practice, to rehearse his second coming, which, sign me up. Let's do it right now, guys. Beam me up. Beam us up, Scotty. We're ready to roll. Right? You know how that works. So, so. I see, and I know many of you probably see, that before he comes, there's going to be the John the Baptist sent out in the spirit of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the sons to the fathers. So there's a period to prepare for the second coming. And the Elijahs, the Malachi chapter 4, will be fulfilled. And this is where I start to think to myself, well, what about this appearing thing? Well, I'm going to go with what happened last time, okay? Last time, he appeared for 40 days. So I'm going to say, well, what if there's a peer, an event where he appears, everybody has an epiphany, and he appears for 40 days like he did last time. And then at the end of the 40 days, there's some type of departure or rapture. Well, it turns out that the church already celebrates a season called Epiphany, and it's 40 days long. wonder how that worked out. Okay? And it ends with something called Ash Wednesday. Now, I'm just going by what they have there. So we all, we all look at what happens in Leviticus 23, right? There's these rehearsals, these feasts. Well, Christians have a feast too. We have a feast and a 40-day period or whatever, a four-week period called Advent. Then we have 40 days of Epiphany. And then we have 40 days of Lent. That's the next 40 days. And then we have Passover and Resurrection Sunday. That's 40 days also. So my thought is this, speaking out loud and just kind of going out on a limb. When he appears the first time at the beginning, there's probably going to be a, a departure of somebody. I don't know what. Something. Someone's going to go. Remnant bride, the innocents, the children, I don't know. 40 days later, through this 40 days, there's going to be revivals. I see a revivals going on for 40 days. People are going to have visions of Jesus. He's going to show up at churches. The churches will be packed full 24-7. No one's going to leave because they heard that Jesus appeared at one of these churches or in somebody's home. And then at the end of that, another departure something i don't know and then after that main departure here this is a bigger departure here in the middle of this ash wednesday time frame by the way ash wednesday happens to be the 17th day of the second month where have we heard that before where have we heard the 17th day of the second month Remember what did jesus say about the days of noah the coming of the son of man shall be like the days of noah well it, it turns out this year that Ash Wednesday is on February 17th. Not date setting, just make a note of that. And then, so if there is a large departure in that time frame, there'll be a lot of people who'll be fasting and repenting, calling on the name of the Lord. And, of course, leads into Passover. So, guys, my dogs are barking. Hope it's not too bad. I went ahead and just threw some stuff on here. This is just what ifs. The seasons of the Christian feast year 
would they align with the events of the second coming? You guys can read all this, take it to heart, take it to the Lord. I'm just throwing it out there. These happen to be established feast dates. Christmas. Could Christmas be the birth of the sons of God? January 6th, Epiphany. Ash Wednesday, February 17th. The sixth seal over Passover. So guys, oh, Jesus told Caiaphas that he would see him riding the clouds on the eve of Passover. I thought that was strange that Jesus did that. Could that be the day that Jesus is riding the clouds? Because Jesus does ride the clouds at the sixth seal. I'm going to show that to you. This is something I think we should all just kind of know. Um, let me find this. You guys should, I think this is something just to keep track of. Bear with me a minute. Jesus rides the clouds at the sixth seal. Now, why am I saying Jesus rides the clouds at the sixth seal? Well, here's Matthew 24. Immediately after the tribulation, the tri what? immediately after three and a half years, immediately after 42 months, immediately after seven years. Well, let's see what Jesus says. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, days, not months and years, Okay, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, stars will fall from heaven, the powers of the earth will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming with the clouds. Okay, that's exactly what the sixth seal is. The sun is darkened, the sackcloth. The moon will not give its light. Star this is it. The stars fall from heaven to the earth at the sixth seal. And the powers of the of the heavens will be shaken. The sky is vanished, rolls up like a scroll. Okay, every mountain and island moved, moved out of its place. So I would say. It seems awfully coincidental that these four things that Jesus speaks about in Matthew 24 are the same four things that John speaks about in the sixth seal. So if indeed Jesus is describing the sixth seal in Matthew 24, immediately after... So what, what comes before the sixth seal? The first five seals. So we, we, we could restate Matthew 24. Immediately after the first five seals... Then the sixth seal happens. Well, we know that. We can read Revelation 6 and say that. I'll read it this way. Immediately after the tribulation, the sixth seal occurs and Jesus rides the clouds. So to me, Jesus rides the clouds at the sixth seal. And the sixth seal is after the first five seals. So immediately after the first five seals, Jesus rides the clouds. I mean, you can say it every, any different way you want. But the kicker is here. The stars fall from heaven. That is only the sixth seal. Search it out for yourself. Now, you'll see a third of the stars fall in Revelation 12. But that's at the second sign. The second sign in Revelation 12. That's the same thing. Okay. Um, it, by the way, you're not seeing any stars fall. At Revelation 19, there's no stars falling. When Jesus rides on a white horse and returns to the earth and captures, and he captures the um, the Antichrist and the false prophet, they're thrown alive into the lake of fire. Jesus doesn't kill the beast and the false prophet when he returns in Revelation 19. He says because they're thrown alive into the lake of fire. So he has to kill him before all this. And after he kills him at the beginning here, when he appears, remember that when he appears? We just looked at that a minute ago. This is very confusing, and we all get confused about the timing of all this stuff. See, Jesus is going to kill the lawless one when the lawless one's revealed at the appearance of his coming. This is not Revelation 19. Because, see, I see people kind of allude to this and it's right there in the Bible. We don't need to speculate on this before. So when Jesus rides, you know, Jesus rides a white horse and his armies are arrayed in behind him. Okay. So it says that the beast is captured and the false prophet, who in its presence had done signs and deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two 
weren't killed at Revelation 19 and thrown dead into the lake of fire. They are thrown alive into the lake of fire. So that means that these guys were killed, or well, at least the beast was killed. Remember he gets the head wound? He gets the head wound before he begins to rule. That's why everybody marvels after the beast. Well, who gives them the head wound? Well, the scripture says that a sword, not of man, gives him the head wound. And the Assyrian shall fall by a sword, not of man, a sword, not of man. That, that means it's a supernatural sword, that would be Jesus, shall devour him, and he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be put forth to labor. You go to Habakkuk 3. Here's Jesus. Was your wrath against the rivers, O Lord? When you rode on horses, okay, is that on your chariot of salvation? Okay. And he kills the head of the house of the wicked. Anyway, I've done a video on this. You guys can look that up. Um, I think I'm going to stop here, guys. But anyway, the, the point here is, is that this idea of Jesus appearing, this epiphany, appears to me, no pun intended, that this appearing event, this glorious appearing, all this green text, is going to occur prior to him riding the clouds. And when all this occurs, that's when we receive our crowns and all sorts of other gifts. So guys, you can download this. And with that, have a great day and God bless you.